I'm Jerome Weeks. What has it been like to work at a theater designed by the great architect Frank Lloyd Wright? The Dallas Theater Center is concluding its 50th and last season at the Kalita Humphreys Theater. That's because this fall, the company is moving to the Arts District. The Kalita Humphreys is named for a young actress who died in 1954. We spoke to theater artists about their experiences working there. They recalled it as magical, haunting, and sometimes a pain in the neck. I really like this, this theater, I like this space. It's very, very intimate. There's not a, I don't think there's a bad seat in the house. I learned more in my first three years here than I learned in any three years of my life. It can be a deceiving space because it, of the, the way that it's shaped. There was something about the building that just makes you go, uh, wow. wow, how is this standing? I was first here for the groundbreaking. Uh, I'm also happened to be the daughter of Paul Baker, who was the founding artistic director of the Dallas Theater Center. I was here uh, periodically during the development of the building, and I, I especially remember them putting all the braces up uh, for the uh, proscenium here because they were afraid it was the cantilevered out and it was afraid it might uh, sag. And it went up with all the weights put on it, it went down a little bit, they took them off and it rose right back up. So it did exactly what Wright said it would do. So I remember the great celebration over that. I began here at the Dallas Theater Center, I believe it was 1984. My first show was playing Mozart in Amadeus. So we were doing a production of The Miser. Randy Moore was playing the lead role in that. We had a uh, thunderstorm during a performance one night. Boom, everything goes. Lights out everywhere. And the set, the design of the set, had about a gajillion candles all over the set because he was a miser, right? We played the rest of that show. They came around and lit all of those candles, and we played two-thirds of that show in candlelight. And it was truly one of the most extraordinary theatrical experiences I've ever had. I came to the Dallas Theater Center for the first time in 1969 as a grad student uh, when the theater was affiliated with Trinity University. Mr. Wright had decided that you didn't really need a lot of scenery. And he devised two ramps on either side of the stage that came down to the shop that were curved ramps that you could take the scenery up to the stage on these two ramps. Well, the ramps also have low ceilings, so tall scenery couldn't go up them unless you put them on the side, on their side. And if they were long pieces of scenery, you couldn't get around the curve. So Paul Baker asked for a design change. He asked if there could be an elevator, at least on one side of the stage, so that he could get big pieces of scenery up to the stage. Well, Mr. Wright was so incensed at this that legend has it he threw him out of his house and told him, not on your life am I changing this design. At some point, someone who worked for him, for Mr. Wright, found Mr. Baker and said, we know you need this, so we will sneak it in, just don't tell him. So when Mr. Wright came to do his last inspection of the building before, uh, before it opened, they stacked up a lot of cardboard boxes in front of this elevator. And when he asked what that was, they said that it was a lot of lighting equipment that hadn't been unpacked yet. And he was very happy to accept that answer and left, never knowing that the elevator was hiding behind those boxes. I first came to the Dallas Theater Center in 1991. It's a maze back here. Yes, it is a maze, and I tell you, I'm still finding places in this building that I never knew existed, just kind of stumbling up on stuff. I mean, Frank Lloyd Wright had his own idea for this building. They have haunting parties. I've never participated when we did Tommy. I know that some of the cast members and the crew stayed around, and, and they'll wait until like midnight, one o'clock, and everybody, you know, they play cards and they have cocktails and stuff, and then if they cut the lights out, 
and everybody has to be quiet and you wait for Miss Kalita. I, I won't participate in that. <laughs> Miss Kalita, I love you, girl. Just bless us where you are. Just don't make yourself known to me. The first show that I did on this stage would be in uh, 1989. It's a production of Once in a Lifetime. Um, that was my first, my first big show. My favorite place is, uh, in the building is up on the roof. It's where I go um, about 15 minutes prior to curtain. I go up there and I do some, some uh, final vocal warm-ups and physical warm-ups. So you're saying if someone comes in here 15 minutes early, they're likely to hear you vocalizing up there? Yeah, and, and we try to keep the swearing down to a minimum, but uh, yeah. Actually, it, it's funny. I, I have been up there prior to shows and uh, been vocalizing, doing warm-ups, and audience members looking up like, I hear something. What is that? Um, but I, I try not to be cruel about it. <laughs> as you walk th as you walk through this building particularly in some of the backstage areas you can feel history you can feel uh, I, I don't know like the spirits of all the other uh, not just the actors but the characters that have, that have been in this in this space it just seems rich I don't know if it's haunted people have told me that oftentimes you know, it's it's haunted that I've I've never had anything like that. Even though sometimes inside you 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 want to believe those, um, but I've done I've done a, quite a few shows here in 20 years, and uh, um, I will miss it. The city of Dallas will determine what happens next for the Kalita Humphreys. You can listen to more memories about the theater online at artandseek.org. Thanks to KERA videographer Ivy Suber, who shot this piece, and also the Dallas Public Library and the Dallas Theater Center for photos and assistance. Chris? Thanks, Jerome. To access our free podcasts, you can go to the Think page of KERA's website, kera.org slash think. And we'd like to know your thoughts on the show as well. You can email us at think at kera.org. My name is Chris Boyd. Thanks for being with us, and have a great week. To learn more, go to kera.org slash think. Think is made possible in part by Perot Systems, a technology services company trusted by more than 500 clients worldwide. Perot Systems delivers technology infrastructure services, consulting, application solutions, and business process solutions that enable growth. By Southwest Securities, a nationally recognized regional brokerage firm that's been meeting the needs of Southwest investors for more than 30 years. Southwest Securities is a member of the New York Stock Exchange and SIPC by the Executive Education Center at the University of Texas at Dallas, providing degree and non-degree programs to help corporate professionals and executives stay ahead. On the web at som.utdallas.edu slash executive. And by the valued support of KERA members. Thank you.